Welcome back to uh, the Royal Berkshire Shooting School for the sixth part of our series on how to become the shot you've always wanted to be in association with uh, Hull Cartridge. Now we've had a lot of questions so far from people at home about uh, all different kinds of things really, but one of the things that's come up a lot is how you take on a bird that you can see from a long way out. We all know those guys who uh, say they just look at the floor for a long time until the bird's right on top of them and then sort of take it on. Uh, and funnily enough, we've also had questions about uh, what I would call snap shooting, so when a bird comes at you right through the trees. Uh, so we thought we'd address that in uh, in this part. So Tom, I always feel that when I see a bird coming from a long way out, it's it's when I stop panicking. But you know, you were saying that if you've got everything down and you're doing everything right, you think that it should be your friend in the field and a bird that you know you can uh, you can hit more times than uh, perhaps you miss it. How do you how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, for me personally, um, seeing that bird coming from a distance, I actually you know I, I cherish that bird coming from a long way. Um, the excitement, the sort of the looking forward to that possible opportunity. Uh, a lot of people they they find it quite intimidating purely because it comes down to a, a timing fact and maybe too much or too much time looking at that bird coming from a long way. So we'll start to talk about a bit more field craft, picking that correct bird. Um, the main fact is where it goes wrong, you'll start too early on the bird, okay, which means you'll hold on, hold on, start looking at the gun, start trying to almost measure, you lose that timing, that smoothness and the shot goes wrong. And then you're trying to get leave it a bit later and you hold on and the bird's a bit late and it ends up being a bit of a mess. Uh, two major faults when uh, people actually panic, seeing a bird coming from too far. When, um, when we're dealing with birds coming from a long way, um, you've got to think to yourself, <coughs> operate and actually in your mind, depending on the height, where you are, topography, type of drive, where you actually want to kill that bird, and that's what we're going to talk about as we go So through. are you saying that you should sort of identify a killing zone in your mind, and when the bird enters that killing zone is when you, um, when you go for it first? Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I, I'll operate in a certain situation, I'll actually take on board my, my surroundings, my environment, and work out where I'm most comfortable, where my body is going to allow me to bring my style technique in to actually kill that bird successfully uh, around myself. And I won't um, think about starting or even moving on that bird until I'm comfortable that that bird's in the correct And you hear, um, there's a lot of people, you know, it's the kind of thing you hear on the gun bus, someone's saying, oh, well, what you need to do with those birds coming from a long way out is you just stand there looking at the ground like that, and then suddenly you're up there and you go for it. Um, is that presumably not something that you would advocate? I mean, do you personally stand there staring that bird to death from a long way out until it gets in that killing zone, or how, how do you? Yeah, I, the, the thing with um, shooting any game consistently is you just got to keep calm, even in heavy winds. Uh, nothing can move faster than you can move that gun. Um, and if you're sound in technique and you're sound in your mind, you know, your mind slows everything down, your technique, give, basically you're the one in control. Okay, should we have a look at a target that maybe replicates that bird coming from a long way out? Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to just basically stand a little bit further back from uh, mm. the tower and just see, and actually we, we'll possibly talk about where it goes wrong, you know, starting too early and you'll see yourself, how people start to hold on, and then leaving it too late and how it goes wrong, and actually how we, we can actually process our thought mind to actually getting that timing right and actually shooting the bird consistently. Okay, so here we are uh, with Patrick. We've got a tower set at a bit of distance. Okay, so we've got a bird. This is effectively what we're talking about, our longer window. Uh, what we're gonna actually go through with Patrick is how do we actually take that bird on. Your first thoughts, number one, you're watching uh, where your birds are coming from, very important. That'll help you naturally start to pick a correct bird. Okay, then we're gonna set ourselves up correctly for the shot. All right, so addressing the bird correctly, holding the gun, uh, the muzzles correctly to the height and line of the bird. That'll help you get your timing as the bird comes towards you. Okay, you've worked out in your mind your zone where you feel comfortable with killing it, where your body is going to enable you to kill the bird nice and comfortably. I'm going to talk about never ever changing your mind at the last moment. When you have focused on that bird and you've set yourself up for that bird, do not change your mind at the last moment just because you think, oh, this one's slightly easier. It's a, a surefire way of the shot going wrong. So we're just going to have a few shots here. <coughs> Okay, so just as you can see, Patrick's addressing the bird nicely. It's about a 25 30 yard um, clay coming from a bit, bit of distance. Good shot, good timing, nice pickup. We're going to go through three things working out where you feel comfortable to shoot it, addressing that bird nicely. Uh, which enables you to get your timing and your tempo correct. One of the key areas of difficulty here, Tom, one of the questions that we've had actually on three occasions now from people at home, from people watching this series, is uh, when you say shoot a bird out in front when it's coming from a long way, you know, how far in front is in front? Uh, where you should be shooting a bird, 
from the 25 to 30, 35, 40. Um, is around 11 yards. Yards, yards yeah. yeah. So it's, that's, that's the comfortable. What we're aiming for, shooting a bird in front is shooting it in its engine room. So head, neck, front half of the body, okay? We want lights out, <clears throat> we don't want you know, engines on fire. So it's not so much shooting a bird out in front of you as opposed to shooting that bird in its front? Shoot that bird in the engine room, as I call it. Yeah. Right, okay. Okay, so we're just going to go through a few shots. All right, with Patrick. Okay, so Patrick is <clears throat> going to address the bird nicely. He's got his muzzles working with him. All right, okay, nice timing. Got, dis early. got distracted by those uh, birds. You want more time on that bird? And that's the thing with, with, with shooting birds at distance. You've got time, okay? You have time if you set yourself up properly, you read the bird, you pick a bird, you field craft. Okay, there's no need to panic. Common faults very much, okay, this is where addressing the bird helps, is starting on the bird too early, okay, what happens, you start on the bird too early, your brain tells you you've started too early, you hold on, you start now, your gun is slowing down, you're now starting to aim, you've lost all your timing, your tempo, your speed, okay, it's not a smooth shot. Um, so we just, and again, Patrick. Okay, shot. Okay, so comfortably shooting at about, 11 o'clock, okay, it enables you that if you were to prick the bird or miss, it still enables you, your body comfortably to shoot a uh, second shot, either to finish the bird or actually kill it on the second shot. So Tom, we've um, covered the bird that comes from a long way out, uh, and now often, you know, up and down the country, you find yourself on a peg, a little bit like this, when a bird is gonna come just straight over the trees and kind of catch you unawares. How can you give yourself the best possible chance of uh, taking that bird on and making a successful shot? Okay, so I describe it, it's like those little wooded drives uh, whether that's hardwood or firs, firs slightly hard because obviously they don't um, lose their leaves, keep their needles. So this is shooting what I call the short window, the small window. Uh, some people describe it as snap shooting. In my mind, snap shooting just implies messy shooting. Okay, uh, again, the same situation. You get into a small, um, a small situation like this where you only have a certain window. That's where your eyesight needs to be. Okay, and that's where you're going to be addressing uh, your gun when you start hearing birds move in order to actually benefit and make the most of that the, the shooting situation that you've effectively got. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a few sort of uh, situations with Patrick. Uh, small window uh, up here, uh, it's just a little le left to right coming off uh, again another sort of 25 yard tower uh, and we'll go through how you, Patrick can actually make the most of that short window. Okay so shooting these small windows is so important that your eyes are to the sky all the time don't get distracted by what's going on with your neighbours. You're listening to what's going on. Your eyes are always aware uh, of what's going on above you. Okay, and we're just going to go through just a couple of shots. I'm going to shoot this straight bird nicely. Good. Then out to the right. Look back for it. Good. Okay, nice and relaxed. It's so easy to, as soon as you become distracted when you shoot a small window, and your eyes start wondering, you start actually focusing on what's going on, you're not truly focusing on what's actually happening up above you. Don't panic. Uh, they may seem like they're moving fast because the window's so short, but they're not. Uh, and again, address your bird nicely, style technique, stay calm, and you'll shoot consistently. Thanks very much for tuning in on this uh, really lovely autumnal day at the Royal Berkshire Shooting School to the sixth part of our uh, shooting time series on how to become the shot you've always wanted to be, which we're doing, of course, in association with Hull Cartridge. Um, you know, so today we've really been looking at two of those things that can, that can sort of frighten us on a shoot day, which is those birds coming from a long way out and, uh, and snap shooting, of course, as well. Um, so, Tom, what are we going to be looking at next time when we're here again? So next time we're going to be looking at taking on that higher bird the high pheasant, not the extreme pheasant, the high pheasant, so that sort of 40 to 45 yards, whether you're actually in topography that offers that high pheasant consistently, uh, or whether you're on your uh, small syndicate, depending on where you are in the, in the, uh, in the, in the country, uh, everybody at some point is gonna get that pheasant that's gonna turn on its tail and offer that more challenging shot. So we'll, we'll be speaking about that in the next episode. 
So I'm heading up to uh, the Humber at the end of the week to do a little bit of wild fowling uh, up there near Hull. So hopefully I'll get a chance to put into practice what we've been talking about today, perhaps with a goose that's coming from a long way out, a pink foot maybe if I'm lucky. And I hope that you also get a chance to put into practice uh, what we've covered in the series so far. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Thanks. See you next time.